Well, Ben, welcome. Thanks for agreeing to uh, talk with us today. Let's get a little introduction. What's your career been like to this point? How'd you get here? Well, I was a, a graduate student at Princeton and I uh, studied economic theory and then, uh, you know, became, yeah, became interested in, um, uh, you know, in economic theory and the particular areas of theory that I work on, uh, uh, game theory in particular, and then uh, after finishing my graduate studies at Princeton, I came to Becker Friedman Institute. Okay, let me ask you a couple questions. So, so obviously you have lots of talents and you could have done lots of things. What drew you to economics? What made you say, ah, oh, economics is where I want to apply my talents? You know, that's a, that's a good question. I guess I started college um, having um, a broad set of possibilities on my mind as to what I could end up doing and then, you know, took some economics courses um, and found that uh, it was a way of thinking about the world that just very much appealed to me. You know, economics is thinking about uh, fundamental questions about human behavior and human decision making, uh, which is important to all of us. And, but at the same time, it's using tools that are very uh, methodical and careful, you know, formalizing our ideas about human behavior using the language of mathematics. And I think uh, that combination is very appealing to me as a way to talk precisely about you know, what's actually a, an extremely rich and complicated subject. It's a little bit like the Goldilocks story. I mean, it's the way I see what you're saying here, because it's like it's just right in a sense for you, because on the one hand, it's about fundamental questions of human behavior that we can think about are applicable to lots of things in life and overall well-being and macroeconomic phenomena, microeconomic phenomena, social phenomena, all mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. But it sounds to me like you were attracted also by the toolkit, that this was, it had a well-defined, I hear coming from you, set of tools that one could say, okay, I can master these tools and I can use these tools to attack some important issues. So it's, is, that, is that what you're saying? The combination of those two things, interesting questions, and a well-honed or at least potentially well-honed toolkit? I think that's close to, to uh, how I feel about it. So, uh, you know, there are mathematical tools that we use in our work and, you know, one could like those tools and like mathematics independently of the particular questions that one's working on and, you know, there are mathematicians that do absolutely beautiful work I guess um, that's what I'm asking. Why, but, but, why economics as opposed to mathematics? Right. And why economics as opposed to another field of social science? But I guess I don't look at uh, the, you know, I do find the mathematics beautiful, but I don't think it's because of that that I appreciate its use within economics. I think, um, you know, I start from really liking these questions about why do people behave the way they do. And in my view, what characterizes economics as a distinct science is this methodological uh, commitment to thinking about individual decision making. You know, even macroeconomists who are talking about the behavior of, of entire countries um, are thinking about countries as an aggregate of individual decisions. Um, and that, that, I think, is the uh, primitive piece of economics that I, I really love and am interested in. But then, you know, once you're interested in, in individual decision making, there are a lot of different tools and, and ways in which you can imagine approaching that, uh, some more heuristic, and some more uh, logical, perhaps. And I think what I like about uh, the way that economics uses um, uh, its tools is that it provides, you know, we, we've sort of coordinated on a very precise language in which to talk about um, these phenomena that we're interested in. And I think that makes our conversation precise and it allows us to, to reach sharper conclusions than um, you know, we would be able to if we, if we didn't use mathematics. I'm hearing you say, that kind of corrects the statement I made before, makes it clearer, is it's the utility or the usefulness of the toolkit. Absolutely. Not the beauty of the toolkit. Absolutely. Is that attracts you to it. Absolutely. And I think it, you like the toolkit because it has a lot of useful tools. I like the it. toolkit because what it brings and the kind of conversation that it facilitates. Um, 
you know, and I think even within economics, it's not that we, you know, only communicate through mathematics. We have uh, in casual discussion, informal introductions to what we're working on. Um, but often I find that there, are, there is confusion or disagreement when you're in the introduction to a talk or reading the introduction to a paper. But then you get to the model and all of a sudden everyone knows what we're all talking about and you can have a much more um, focused discussion and, and clearer discussion um, about the issues. Yeah, one of the biggest problems though is when you try to go full circle and then say, okay, well, what did that teach us about the problem I was right, interested in? Right. That's again where the disagreements seem to come up. Right, right. No, but if you can reduce some statement about behavior to a set of primitive axioms and then focus your debate on whether or not we agree on those axioms, I think it's a much more productive way to have a, have a discussion, um, you know, because there's this clear language of expressing, you know, what, what our conclusions depend on. But then at the end of the day, that implies that economics and this economic approach that you talk about in terms of this toolkit or um, set of tools should be evaluated on whether those tools ultimately prove useful. Sure. Not like their aesthetic value. Well, I didn't get sure. the right answer, but it sure looked good trying. That's right. You know? <laughs> right. I mean, I think we can appreciate aesthetic value while we're going along, but at the end of the day, we want to, um, we want to make progress on understanding questions um, that we care about, and, uh, and I think the ultimate value of the tools has to be measured in whether or not we accomplish that. Mm -hmm.